Okay. I'm not exactly sure why you're here because there's like a million of these on the internet, but um, you're probably just obsessed with this thing, which, hey, <laughs> to be fair. I'm Corey McCabe with Behind the Film, and I'm gonna do a rig walkthrough of everything I've got going with my Ursa Mini 12K. To start, I've kind of, I wanna go through this in order of importance. So number one, uh, you can't use this without power. So we're gonna talk about power number one. And number two, you can't see anything if you don't have a lens on it. So that's gonna be number two. And number three, oh, number three is recording. And then number four, before I go into rigging, I'm gonna talk about the tripod and tripod plate. Uh, and then lastly, we'll talk about rigging. This is not gonna be a video about my review of the camera and how it performs. Um, I might do that later, especially if you comment and ask me for it. That would be nice, because hey, I'm a super small channel, obviously, as you can tell. So yeah, I'd appreciate connecting with you. But yeah, so let's talk about power first. So I've got a V-mount battery, and that is connecting to the Ursa Mini because of a V-mount plate. So I'm using the Headbox V-mount plate adapter, and then I'm using the Raytrick. 300 watt hour battery. I've been scouring the internet for the largest V-mount battery <laughs> in existence. Um, I think I found it. If you do know of a, a, a V-mount battery with a higher watt hours, uh, please let me know because I'd love to know that. For traveling purposes, uh, you want to stay under 100 watt hours because uh, airlines can be pretty picky about that. But if you do have an hour uh, a watt hour battery that's bigger than 100 hours, you can always contact the airline before you're flying and sometimes they can have you fill out a form and you can work it out. Um, but I don't do a ton of flight traveling, so I wanted to get the biggest V-mount battery possible. I'm getting about five-ish to five, five to six hours worth of usage out of the 300 watt hour battery, which is absolutely amazing. Um, if I'm powering more stuff off of it, like, you know, the tilt of the nucleus M, then I'm gonna get uh, a little bit less than that. Uh, so I, as I add things, obviously I'm getting a little bit yet less usage. What I also like about this uh, Raytrick 300 watt hour battery is that it doesn't have like a screen on the back, which I purposefully do not want. Uh, a lot of people do want that, but I don't like that because it's just another thing soaking up power. What I do like about this is that with the click of a button, you can see one, two, three, four. So that's gonna be your 25, 50, 75, and 100% um, roughly. I like seeing that because it's just a quick, you know, you check on it, you go, okay, cool, I'm still full, or I'm three quarters full. And then it will turn off after like, you know, 10 seconds or something. I really like that just as a quick check, but on the Blackmagic uh, uh, Ursa Mini 12K, when you're looking on the screen, you can actually see, uh, that indicated on the screen as well. The screen will not be more exact than the battery, meaning that it's still gonna be in four quarters uh, how much battery you have, but you can see it on a little indicator. So that's my battery system. Um, whenever possible, I try to plug it into the wall with the four pin wall adapter that it comes with. Um, and that just you know helps save on battery power whenever I can. Uh, Cause these things take a little bit to charge. So uh, the, the V-mount batteries that is, so um, I try to be plugged in to the wall as often as I can if it's close enough and available for that shoot. All right, with power out of the way, let's talk about the lens. Um, I'm currently rocking, I don't know why I said rocking, that sounds so dumb. I'm using the Laowa 25 to 100 millimeter. This is a T29, um, so not like incredibly fast or uh, wide open, but uh, it is pretty nice and I really like it. It's also parfocal. So that's a really big plus for me because I, I do documentaries, I do um, sport videos, stuff like that uh, quite often. All right, with power out of the way, let's talk about the lens. Um, I'm currently rocking, I don't know why I said rocking, that sounds so dumb. I'm using the Laowa, the camera ships with a PL mount, but I put the EF mount because all of my glass was Canon at the time. So I got the EF mount. Uh, this Laowa lens does come with PL, EF and Sony E mount. Uh, but since I already put the EF mount onto the Ursa body itself, I decided just to put the EF <laughs> mount onto the lens. I'll probably switch to PL because that's just a lot more secure and I really am a fan of that. But for now, I'm doing a EF mount. Another lens I use, which you don't see right here, is a really cheap Canon 50 millimeter 1.4. Um, I, yeah, it just looks good every now and then. I had a 28 millimeter uh, milliliter. Did I say milliliter? 
Anyways, I have a Canon 28 millimeter, but that broke, so I can't control the aperture. <laughs> Uh, really obnoxious. Um, I don't know why I brought that up to be honest. But anyways, I've gotten some really pretty images out of this lens. Um, I might do a full review on that because uh, it probably deserves it. Okay, moving on to recording. You have several options with this camera, but again, I'm just kind of sticking to what I'm doing um, because I think that's the most useful. I'm not gonna do like a, hey, here's everything that the camera can do. It's just, just my setup. Uh, right here, you can see the Sandus Extreme SSD portable uh, it's SSD, uh, really fast, four terabytes, and I've been extremely happy with that. Extreme. <laughs> it's funny because it's it's called Extreme. Anyways, and what I have coming out of that is a USB-C to USB-C cable. Uh, it's a 20 gigabits per second cable. I think you'd be okay with a 10 gigabits per second cable, but I've got the 20 just in case, which is also kind of multi-purposeful because if I want to uh, plug that into my computer um, and use that cable as like uh, video transfer like if I want to have a monitor or something like that this cable can be used for that because it's USB 3.2 um, so it does have that capability so that's what I'm using it and it's also a, a right angle so that's actually really handy just because um, I don't like it when things are sticking straight out it's just nice to have it uh, as a right angle cable. And I always, always try to find right angle cables wherever I can, like with XLR cables, for example, it's just nice to have those 90 degree angles. Uh, this is sort of a sub bullet. I don't know if it like really counts. No, it does. I'm deciding that it does count as a sub bullet. I use the Blackmagic Video Assist 7 inch 12G recording monitor, which is obviously nice to just have it has a monitor but it could also do external recording you can look into that product it's it's pretty cool uh you can do sdi in and out you can do hdmi in and out it's got like mini XLR xlr ports for audio but the main reason is uh i'm listing it under the recording options because you can put sd cards in there or usb C um, external hard drive and you can record from that monitor as well to get like smaller uh, file sizes because this <laughs> the camera has some pretty big file sizes depending on uh, how you're shooting and what formats but honestly regardless of like even if you did like the lowest uh, bit rate like it's these are some big files for sure so this four terabyte ssd is uh, definitely comes in handy i don't usually fill it out even on really long shoots but I really do like having it. And when I'm using it on my computer, I can also uh, read and write from it really fast. So editing uh, these really large file sizes is, is pretty nice. But uh, yeah, it's also it's also nice to have the, the smaller file sizes from the video assist monitor because, you know, for clients or honestly just to save on storage, it's, it's pretty nice. But yeah, I don't typically use it for recording. I kind of use it as a, a webcam interface because I can connect this to the video assist monitor. And then with a USB-C cable, I can connect it to my computer and my computer sees it as a, a camera input device, which is really cool because obviously that's not just for this camera, that's for all of the cameras that you connect to the monitor via HDMI or SDI. You just use a little USB-C cable, go to your computer, and then uh, you've got a pretty much any camera can be a webcam, which is pretty cool. So before I move on to like rigging and just stuff that I use, like small rig stuff basically, before I move on to that, um, I, I think in order of importance, um, so at this point we've talked about power, having a lens to see through, and then recording. Those are your like bare bones um, to be able to use this camera, right? Um, and to be honest, you actually don't have to have a V-mount battery in order to use this because it comes with that four pin um, wall adapter. And I was doing that for like many months. <laughs> I had like extension cords and everything uh, because uh, to be honest, I, I wasn't having any client gigs at the time and I, I didn't wanna spit out money on a V-mount battery. So I was just plugging it into the to any near outlet. <laughs> that was fun. Anyways, back on track. So you've got power, you've got a lens uh, and you've got a way to record and we could talk about like, oh, all of the special rigging stuff, but I feel like in order of importance, like get this thing on a tripod. So the next thing I wanna talk about is uh, not necessarily my tripod, cause I think you could probably get a more sturdy one, but I really wanna uh, talk about the VCT plate. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you get, but having a VCT plate, quick release plate is, it's just game changer. Like right now I've got this on the tripod with just one little lever. I've got this thing totally off and ready to go. 
I mean, that's just so, so fast. And then you can just pop it on right here and it's just boom, done. I, that was worth the money. It, it kind of hurt my wallet a little bit cause it was like, oh man, that's, do I really need that? But the alternative was to get, just getting those, uh, you know, those classic tripod plates that come with the tripod head. You got like a flathead screwdriver and even if it's two screws sometimes, you're doing two screws and, and it's just a pain. It's such, such a pain. So I really, really am a big advocate for the VCT uh, quick release plates. I use the small, small rig one and I will be honest, like I went to eBay and like tried to be a little bit cheaper and I found one for like $49, maybe $60. I ended up returning it because the build quality just wasn't really good. It was like some parts were plastic, even though it was a hard plastic, I just, I wasn't really feeling good about it. And it's like, I've got all this, uh, equipment and stuff that I just want to be able to like buy good things and really trust my equipment on it so I went with small rig I, I hated to be like a small rig simp but it was just like it, it, it was like the most sturdy and like well-reviewed one so I think I'm gonna add to those numbers of giving it a good review so yeah regardless of what you pick on VCT quick release play I would definitely look into one um, I can talk about talk about my tripod setup real quick I don't know if I'd totally advocate for it because as I put more on this weight wise, uh, this tripod I have, it's like a Milibu something. I'll put it on the screen, Milibu something. It's been okay, but like sometimes when I've had more weight on it, I've noticed it would start to like sink a little bit on one leg. And I'm sure there's some way to like get in there and like tighten some screws and stuff, which I did do, but I was still having that problem. So it might work for you if you don't have like a ton of weight because it's been, other, other than that little bit where it kind of sank in on one leg a little bit, and maybe it was just my model, so you might give it a shot. What I really liked about this tripod, other than that, is that it's just got those three, um, just those three quick levers here. I'll, I'll show them on the screen. Uh, you, just, you just open them up, close them, and there's just three, as opposed to some tripods, the, the cheaper tripods where you've got like knobs that you're screwing uh, multiple per leg. And so that's kind of annoying. This also can get really, really low to the ground. So that's another reason why I like it, but you might shop around and make sure that uh, the weight capacity is, is gonna work for what your setup is. I also use the Manfrotto, Manfrotto. I always said Manfrotto, but I looked it up and it seems like it has two T's, so it's probably Manfrotto. I'm pretty happy with this. It would be, it's not like the most professional thing you could possibly get, that's for sure. But I, I'm pretty happy with like the fluidity of it. The only thing I'm not happy about is like the, how cumbersome it is to, to level it. Uh, you've, you've got the handle under here and there's a little like bubble head there, but the bubble head does not light up. And I find that pretty annoying, maybe a little bit frustrating but um, it, it works. Um, I just, I think I would invest in like, just higher, higher end stuff there when I can afford it. When I get the next client paying gig, um, I'll probably do that because I'm not like incredibly happy with this, but it does work for, for what I'm doing now. And I do feel like I can trust my camera on it. Uh, this tripod head, it's, it definitely handles the weight pretty well. Cool, so that's tripod stuff. Let's move on to just general rigging. And there's not a ton here, to be honest. I've got a, a nicey rig top camera mounting plate. It's got a, a ton of, of mounting options, so I'm pretty happy about that. And I haven't even fully utilized it because I wanna have like a uh, the video assist monitor somewhere right here so that when I'm having it on my shoulder, I can have that there. So I'll probably utilize some of those threads there. It's pretty nice. Um, nothing super special about it. I think small rig makes some, some other people make some, but I went with nice rig because of price and it did what I needed it to do. Also, I have, uh, it's also from nice rig. It's kind of hard to see, but holding these 15 millimeter rods is another nice rig product. And it basically is a 15 millimeter clamp. Um, and that goes onto the, the nice rig top plate. And next I've got small rig. So another small rig product here is the, the 15 millimeter rods. So ones on top and on bottom. And I use the ones on bottom for yet another small rig product. Um, this is a lens support. Um, I feel like not a lot of people use lens support, even with longer lenses. And it seems like it might be wearing on the, uh, camera mount a little bit, even if it's PL, obviously PL is really good, but um, I do like having uh, lens support. And so I've got this small rig one, and this is basically 
uh, the screw kind. So it's not just a Y clamp, a Y clamp, or not clamp, uh, a Y mount will just have the lens rest on that Y, but this uh, screws into the lens because my lens has like those uh, female quarter inch for the lens support system. So uh, that's also small right there. I feel like the next thing I should talk about is uh, the shoulder mount kit. This is from Black Magic. Again, this gets the job done. I would honestly probably go with small rigs shoulder mount kit. You're getting the shoulder pad that goes onto the bottom of the camera. You're getting the top handle, which also has some mounting options. Same with the small rig. It also comes with uh, the rosette attachments on the left and right side, but something else Blackmagic uh, shoulder mount kit comes with is an extension arm. Uh, and I found myself using that a couple times, um, but lately a lot of my work has been tripod, so I haven't used that lately, but I imagine as I start to uh, do more on the shoulder, shoulder rig stuff that might come in handy. Although I do like the articulating arms. I can't remember the brand, but those seem quite nice because they can move in any position. Whereas the rosette extension arm that Blackmagic shoulder mount kit comes with is a bit uh, straightforward. So to wrap up the, uh, the shoulder mount piece, uh, I wouldn't advocate for spending the, whatever it is, $400 on the Blackmagic one. I, I like Blackmagic as a brand. I think they do good stuff, but I think there's some, some of the third party companies have uh, <laughs> definitely uh, surpassed what uh, you get what I'm saying. I pretty much just got two pieces left for you. So I'm actually pretty happy with my solution for mounting the SanDisk 4 terabyte SSD. So this is also small rig and it's basically a power bank holder but i figured that's right about the same size as the ssd so it, it works pretty well with that the only caveat is that if you were to extend this all the way the ssd long ways is too is too long and if you were to do it like this it's actually too small so this closed down all the way doesn't actually grab this. And so I was really upset about this, but my solution, which kind of works, you can you can see it here. I've got these uh, 3M Velcro patches here that I cut with scissors. And this is just the fuzzy, like soft side of the Velcro. And I'm not using the Vel Velcro functionality, which I could, but I, I didn't really want to. I'm actually using this just to add more thickness to the clamps themselves. So now it actually works perfectly. and. Again, with, if it's 3M, you know you can trust it because that's like the best ad adhesive money can buy. At least to mo at least for like consumer. There's probably something way better out there. You don't want to use super glue. Although you could, but you wouldn't. You wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to do that. You could do that. You could. Okay, lastly, let's talk about, oh wait, actually there's a bonus one. Before, I was gonna talk about the Tilta Nucleus M just really briefly. Obviously there's full videos on that. I'm not gonna do like a full deep dive. But before I get to that, I just really, I forgot I had this. This is the uh, uh, Tentacle E-Sync or something like that. Um, I have two of them and this thing has been sick, like just really sick. How I have it attached here is uh, just Velcro. I think it actually came with it now that I think about it. Uh, you can see on the back here, it's got it's got a Velcro <laughs> there. Um, and so, yeah, it actually comes with that Velcro. And so I just put it straight onto the Ursa Mini body and uh, I'm perfectly comfortable with that. Um, and so it just goes there and then it plugs into the back here where the time code references. And man, that thing has been really, really cool. So that's just how I have that there. Yeah, this came this came separately. It's a BNC, it's basically SDI, but if you search BNC, that'll get better results. I can also link, I'm gonna link all of this stuff in the description if you wanna check it out, which will really help my channel out if you if you click on it, but obviously uh, you don't have to do that. But anyways, this is a BNC cable to three point, that basically that goes into the, to the, the tentacle sinky. I, I really, really like that. So that's a nice little setup. Lastly, we've got the Tilta Nucleus M wireless follow focus system. This, is just game changer. Again, I do a lot of documentary and sports work, so I'm a huge fan, huge, huge fan. It's just really, really solid. So what I've got is like, I've got it on these top rails here. I've also got a, an additional cable that does not come with the kit, and that's this one right here. You can see it's got this little plastic thing on it. This one's different because it goes to 
the the lanc l-a-n-c i don't know if you pronounce that or i don't know the record basically i'm able to record and so with this thing right here uh this doesn't have to be wired in as long as this is turned on and it's on the same channel as my system here, it, I can hit the, the the record button and then it will record on the camera. There's only like a slight downside, which is that it takes like, you know, maybe 0.8 seconds, which is like click and then it records and then click and then it stops. So there's like a slight delay, but uh, for the convenience, I don't mind it. It's actually really, really nice. So again, like I said, that probably deserves its whole own video on how I use it, how how effective it is. Also, there's tons of videos on YouTube about it, so I don't feel like a pressing need to, unless you just want my take. It's been 10 months since I've had the camera, so I could do like a 10 month review or a year review probably would be uh, better clicks. But yeah, I'll probably come out with some videos about like workflow in terms of like using the files, storing the files, uh, editing with them and things like that. And even like B-RAW files, how to grade with those, at least how I grade with those. There's tons of videos. Kazi has some really good stuff. I would definitely check out his channel. But subscribe if you'd like to check out my, more of my workflow. But don't subscribe if you if this isn't for you, but at least like the video so that other people might benefit from it. Like you don't have to subscribe. Just at least like it, that, that would help a lot. But also you don't have to, but you do. Okay, wait, before you go, before you go, whoever the camera ends up aiming at, you have to, uh, you have to subscribe to that person. Um, I mean, obviously like if you wanna subscribe, you would have to do it. You don't need to spin the camera to know who to subscribe to. Hey, wait, 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 come back. I have to subscribe to you? All right, this is over.